last week I was invited by the beer market, the Esplanade location. As you know, they have a number of locations, right? There is one at King West, there's one up in York Mills and Lawrence, and there's different locations. But beer market, thanks for inviting me, and I have a wonderful experience there. Uh, there was a beer tasting pairing to introduce me to the new spring food menu and I was able to interview the chef, Chef Alex, uh, introduce me a number of spring food menu. If you've never been to beer market or if you've been before, you in for a surprise and be sure peer, patio season is ready, uh, the food menu is ready. I got to try a number of things. There was appetizer, there's entree, and there was dessert. Now, a lot of places will actually pair you with red wine or white wine, but beer market, of course, they have hundreds hundreds different flavors of beer, so what better way to try in a surprise? Beer pairing. I remember one of my favorite dish and uh, at appetizer was the beet trio, uh, three different kinds of beet that was being very colorful, very nice, and most important, they use local fresh ingredients and this is unlike any other food chains franchise the chef actually inject a lot of their creativity a lot of the thoughts are being put into these food menu it give you fresh and there are a lot of food menus that you don't even see it in other places but this is the place to be and let me show you some of the interview that I have with chef Alex as he here. is going to talk about is the chef importance Alex of fresh at ingredients the beer market the Aspenaut location thanks for having on my show so, Chef Alex, today we're here because of the celebration of the spring food menu of the items that you guys are introduced to the beer market. A lot of my followers love your signature mussels, steam in the pot, as well as the steak uh, for two people, which is amazing. They know a lot of your signature. What are some of the items that people are expect to see in the spring food menu for the beer market? Well, some of the new concepts we're doing is taking on a lot of new cooking techniques with the sous vide and stuff like that. Uh, you'll also get to experience certain dishes like you see in front of you that are um, a one-of-a-kind thing that you won't find anywhere else. Um, we're just really trying to push the envelope on innovation and try new dishes and try new experiences to get the guests involved with the whole cooking scene. Because I know we've all seen over the past few years how the, the rise of popularity in chefs and cooking has become. So we're trying to keep up with the trends and stuff like that and really just trying to showcase good quality food at a reasonable price. And I think that's what we're trying. That's what we will accomplish with this menu coming out. And again, fresh, local, seasonal is another thing that we're really trying to push. A lot of our desserts and some of our menu items will change with the seasons, which is good to keep freshness and people interested in stuff like that. Uh, I got to try now. As you can see, fresh ingredients from interview by Chef Alex. Now you're wondering, where's the food? I want to see the food. Don't worry. I'm going to show you another footage where there's delicious food. But let me tell you, the entree that I tried was um, a very beautiful cooked uh, chicken. And there's another dish that is like seafood buise. buise. It's like a seafood stew and it's beautifully done. There's scallop, there's shrimps, there's lobster tail. Uh, it's just to die for, and g definitely you should check out the beer market Esplanade location. Now, I'm also able to talk to uh, chef, pastry chef Samantha. She really put a lot of input into the seafood, pla uh, the dessert platter. It is like an art. It's like a painting that every in piece of work is like an anti pesto, but it's in delicious dessert. And every time you put it together is very different and let me show you the footage of this beautiful piece of artwork that is like fruit lollops and the amount of thought process that are being put into these ingredients to allow us to taste it and check it out here is the dessert platter and in particular can you describe these two items because when i heard it it is very interesting method that you actually put into these two items especially so the uh, first one we'll start with here, the green one is compressed honeydew melon. So with some of the new equipment, we have a what is called a chamber vacuum sealer. So not the typical vacuum sealers you find at Walmart. This one's an encased unit that changes the pressure. So uh, what we do is we put the uh, melon in a bag with a little melon liqueur to accentuate the flavor. And then I we would vacuum chamber it, causing the melon to compress, change the texture, the color, and the mouth appeal, but still remaining to have its true flavor. Uh, the prosciutto is just a, a spin on a childhood uh, fruit roll up. Fruit roll ups that we've all, I don't know if we can use fruit roll up in this commentary, <laughs> but uh, it's a nostalgic thing that we've all had at least once in our life. And it was the best way our pastry chef could, uh, in, um, how do you say it? Um, best way she could, how do you say it? Uh, impersonate prosciutto, if you will. 
Um, it looks like a slice. It definitely does. Looks like a slice off a fresh piece of um, pig leg, and that's <laughs> what she was going for. The white peach represents the fat that runs through it, and maybe you can hold it up, and you'll see that it actually is designed to look like a sliced piece of prosciutto, which, again, we're putting in that extra little bit of work to have guests experience new and amazing things. Thank you, Chef Alex, right here. As you can see how delicious the food, uh, the dessert platter is, and special shout out to Beer Market. If you want to go there, you better check it out, the nice patio, and check out the spring food items, such as the dessert platter. And I tell them Moverni sends you there, and you know they, they will be very delighted to sh serve you that. Now, this past week, I also got invited to the Hot Dogs, which is a major documentary film festival for all the directors and producers. And I was invited to this special documentary called The Life and Mind of Mark DeFries. Basically, Mark DeFries is basically a person who is a escape artist. He basically escaped prisons for many, many different times and basically it's a documentary about him. And I got a chance to interview the director of this, Mark DeFries, and let's check out the interview. Oh, Congratulations. So what's the setup here? It's on. Oh, it's on? Yeah. This is Moverin on the Moon. Right now I'm live at Hot Dogs, and the reason I'm here is beside me is director for this documentary called The Life and Mind of Mark DeFries. First of all, nice to have you here. Oh, it's great to be here, and thanks for asking to interview me. Gabriel, um, can you tell us about uh, why you choose this special person that is trying to always escape from different prisons and what, why you chose him over any other people that caught your attention? I mean, Mark DeFriest is just a larger-than-life character. He's the kind of person that really deserves to have his story told, um, both because of his incredible feats uh, as, as a human being, you know, his mind, what he's been able to do with his talents as a escape artist. Um, but I think also uh, what really touches me about Mark's story is the fact that he's somebody who is uh, been very much abused by the system, um, whose story needed to be told because he's been misunderstood um, by the people who are continuing to keep him in prison. And if we can tell that story and bring more truth to um, people's eyes, uh, hopefully we can make a difference and a new outcome for him. Now, um, do, do, in, in the documentary, you talk about a, a lot about uh, FSP. So, yo, know, that, that was a beautiful interview with director um, uh, Gabriel London. And you know what? The, the beauty about this documentary is that um, it is very interesting that they inject this documentary with animation. And Jonathan Kerber, along with Thought Cafe, actually did the animation to help tell this documentary story. So let's show the interview of that. <laughs> Yo guys, this is Mover in the Mirror. Right now I'm at the Hot Dogs, and right now is the life and mind of Marta Freeze. This is the documentary. Beside me is the animation producer, Jonathan Kerber. Nice to have you here. Thanks so much. Mo Verney, you look like you're on the move, checking everything out tonight. I'm always on the move, even in the daylight, in a very late night. This is what I do. So Jonathan, tell us about this whole project because um this documentary is very unusual. Um, I haven't never really seen a documentary animation, but in this documentary to tell the story, animation actually play a very big role in here. Sure. So the director Gabriel London, when he was like building this film, you know, he realized at one point that you're not he couldn't really reenact all these crazy escapes that Mark DeFries did. You know, he escaped over a dozen times from state level penitentiaries. Um, you know, regional level stuff, hospitals, all this crazy stuff. And he was like, I'm never going to be able to reenact that and make it look right. So they started searching for sort of an animation team. We had been doing work for a company that he works for on the side that he runs. And they were like, do you guys want to pitch on this? We ended up pitching. We won the contract. And 18 months later, here we are at Hot Docs in our hometown premiering the film. Now, um, the animation, are they mostly... So that was a beautiful interview with Ford Cafe and uh, director of animation, uh, Jonathan Cabert.